Why is it important that we have a European Union a drug strategy and action plan on top of the national action plan? Yeah, yeah as, as you say, the, a lot of the policies are developed on the national level, but I think still there's a need for, for EU-wide coordination, setting priorities, and also for the EU to present their common values in, in international fora. By the nature of the EU, we're all connected to one another. We move around, drugs move around, and drug-related harms move around, and so the value of having a plan which looks across the EU rather than looking specifically at those national contexts is to create a sense of shared responsibility and hopefully to make some shared progress. Europe has a sort of balance between repression policy and social and health policy. And I think that uh, Europe can play an important role in reorienting global drug policy. Without uh, an European uh, strategy, it would not be possible to play this role. What do you think about the new uh, EU action plan which was adopted last year? Can you highlight something which is important mm -hmm. for you? What we are considering more useful for our advocacy work is the encouraging measures for vulnerable populations, elderly populations and women especially. It, what it comes in reference to treatment, recovery and rehabilitation. Also the importance of training healthcare professionals and uh, social uh, care professionals and also the importance of uh, having alternatives to uh, corset extensions. It's much more progressive than most uh, national action plans or drug action plans if they exist at all. Specific interventions are mentioned such as drug consumption rooms, naloxone distribution. It's the first time that the European Union action plan mentions drug consumption rooms. What are your experiences in about drug consumption rooms in France? Yeah, I was very surprised to see that in the EU, EU action plan. We uh, experiment uh, two uh, drug con consumption rooms, one in Paris, one in Strasbourg, for now. And it's, it's great results. The only problem is that we don't have enough. The new EU action plan on drugs also calls member states to reduce overdoses. What do you think how this action is implemented in Spain? In Spain, we are detecting that the the purity of cocaine is increasing. Some people are, state, are stating that probably they could have some overdoses. And we think that with drug checking services we can address easily this problem because once the user is informed about the purity of their products or of their drugs, they can easily adapt their consume to this composition. In the EU action plan, for the first time, they were stating about the importance of drug checking services. And this is a really good, good news. Quality standards. Can you explain us what are quality standards and why, why are they important? So quality standards are uh, supposed to help the professionals in the field to execute, to implement the best possible interventions. They wouldn't be able to solve all the problems but that they, uh, but they will increase the, the self-awareness of those who are, who are implementing the interventions, will help the decision makers to select uh, the promising or really good quality interventions, and would help uh, researchers because they will be able to have a clear framework in which they can check the outcomes. The plan says, that the civil society organization must be involved in designing, implementing, monitoring and evaluating policies. And this is very precise. How would you convince politicians that it is important to involve civil society organizations? What's the benefit for them? We are at the forefront of all actions. We know drug users. We know what kind of realities uh, are on the street. We know which kind of problems and needs drug users have. We know new trends. We know what happens. Every other groups are always participating, except when it's about drug users. So I think, and I'm very grateful that we're finally back in the civil society. Of course, it's if you're not heard and uh, not seen, how can you change and how can you do things for the people 
we are working for. What are the barriers to implement this action plan? How do you see the main barriers? Civil society organizations and policymakers are not aware of the EU drug action plan. They don't know that it exists. And if they know it, that it exists, they don't know the contents. Somehow the member states should be taken accountable for the implementation of the action plan. Because at the moment there is no, no one is accountable. EMCDDA can be made accountable for data collection. A commission can be made accountable for providing the necessary funds. But member states cannot be taken accountable for anything. If you look at the action plan as a whole and then you look at the situation in Hungary, where do you see the biggest uh, gaps? How do you think those gaps could be bridged? Uh, the EU action plan is speaking about broadening or reaching a whole coverage of different type of services. We can say that we are in a very, very bad situation and even though there is an EU action plan related to broadening the, uh, the coverage of the services, we can see that actually instead of being broadened, they are narrowed. And there is some misunderstanding in Hungary related to harm reduction because unfortunately in Hungary it is a widely shared understanding that harm reduction would mean that we would uh, uh, promote drug use among drug users and we don't understand that the recovery-centered approach cannot be implemented without appropriate harm reduction services. The other thing is that uh, the Hungarian drug strategy is putting a very high emphasis on prevention activities and during the last seven, eight years we don't see any substantial development in this regard. Aras, the, um Romanian Anti-AIDS Association is shutting down uh, syringes exchange. So these recurrent problems and um, basically the state needs to take responsibility for its, uh, for its citizens. There's a challenge to be flexible because uh, you need to sort of to, to meet their needs uh, rather than the needs of the system. Because I, think, I, tend, I think that there's a tendency that, that you know, the system develops and exists for itself uh, to some extent uh, and not primarily for the users. And I think that's uh, a challenge, particularly in, in fields like uh, drug treatment and um, sort of substance use treatment. Many programs are not adapted to the beneficiaries' needs. For instance, for pregnant women or women with uh, dependent children or people that have mental health uh, problems, elderly population. So that makes that Either this population they don't access, or they access the treatment and they drop out or in early stages. What remains on the ground, a major barrier for people who use drugs to access services and information, is the overemphasis on drug law enforcement at the expense of health and human rights approaches. Funding is a major issue, and particularly if you look at some of those countries which are in harm reduction funding crisis, Hungary, Poland, Bulgaria, Romania, Greece, um, if there isn't financing, services cannot be there and people cannot access them. And the impact of this is, or will be, spikes in HIV infections, HCV infections and other public health crises among people who use drugs within EU countries. Do you see any practical opportunity to use the uh, action plan in advocacy? We're excited about the prospect of the action plan because in our financing, harm reduction financing in the EU report, um, one of the recommendations that we put forward for the European Union was where there are countries that are in harm reduction funding crisis and the government is not stepping up to fill the gap. We argued that the EU should um, create a time-bound emergency fund so that in particular civil society organisations in those countries could access funding and continue to provide life-saving services where the government is failing to do so. We can certainly use uh, the targets that are set in the action plan and the strategy in our advocacy work because we can, we can hold them to their promises uh, and say this is actually a priority, this has been agreed and you should do something about it. So I think that there is, there is that potential. At the regional, Spanish regional level in Catalonia we are using it as a backup document uh, when in our demands to implement and develop programs for elderly and women programs so it's very useful. It would be nice that uh, national governments would take advantage of it 
and use it, copy paste whatever <laughs> I can do, but just use it and and uh, put it into into practice. I really hope that Europe remains the land of human rights, uh, welfare state, uh, and uh, research. I think that we must fight because Europe remain uh, uh, maintain this political and cultural characteristics.